Did you hear how fast that went? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm actually going to go ahead and teach you three different tricks that you can use to make those hard murmurs just a little bit easier. And then at the end, I'm going to go ahead and play some of these murmurs so that you can go ahead and practice and see if you can identify and use the tricks that I taught you. All right, curious ones, let's go ahead and learn. Let me introduce you here to little Daisy. Daisy is going to be helping us today. Thank you, Daisy. Trick number one, anytime you're trying to listen to what murmur or even just regular normal hard sounds, you will actually place your stethoscope wherever it is that you want to listen to and actively close your eyes. When you have S1, there is closure of the mitral valve and closure of the tricuspid valve. Now they happen so closely together that they sound like one sound, S1, that love. For S2, you actually have closure of the aortic valve and then the pulmonic valve. Again, they happen so closely together that it sounds just like one sound the S2 or the. So you get that closure, mitral, tricuspid, lub, and aortic, pulmonic, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub. I know it seems so easy, but actually when you close your eyes, it will help you focus and use your ears to really focus on that lub, dub, S1, S2. Try it. You can even try it on yourself. Close your eyes and listen to that. Don't worry about anything else that's happening in the heart right now. Don't try and figure it out. Listen to the love dub, love dub, love dub. Systolic between S1, S2, love dub. Diastolic is going to be anything that's not inside of those two. And one really cool trick you can try on yourself is that if you take a really deep breath, you'll actually be able to split your aortic and pulmonic valve sounds. So it'll sound something like this instead of dup, 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 <laughs> you'll actually hear a little extra sound on your dub, your second S2 sound, because you're slightly splitting it. And it's going to sound like this. Go ahead, check it out yourself, and let me know in the comment section if you were able to hear your own splitting of your aortic and pulmonic valve sound. You got to know where to put the stethoscope. So I'm going to teach you exactly the different areas of the chest where you want to listen to these murmurs. Listen to the right upper side of the chest, anatomical right for the baby, then to the left, then in the middle of the chest, and then finally right below the nipple. Now, what are these different areas? This is the aortic area, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral valve. How do we remember that? Remember, if you have your heart right here, you actually have the aorta coming out this way. It's an arch, but it will come out this way. Therefore, since it's coming out this direction, you're gonna hear it louder. Anything that has to do with the aortic valve you'll hear it louder here. Same thing, the right ventricle is pumping to this side through the pulmonary artery. Therefore, you know that it's got anything to do with the pulmonary artery, it's gonna be louder right here on the left upper part of the chest. The tricuspid valve is as close as because the right ventricle is very close to the chest right here. It's gonna be closest right here, a little bit left of the sternum. And then finally, because the heart is shaped and angled in this direction, the apex or the tip of the heart is actually going to be right here, a little bit below the nipple. So this is aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid, and mitral valve. Now, I love teaching on this channel. I basically do this for you, right? So let me know if you like this type of content by going ahead and tickling that little like button. The second trick is when you're actually listening to the heart, what you're going to want to do is actually tap out your lab duck. You can use your fingers, you can use your hand, or you can even tap out with your feet. Okay, and now on to the third trick. You want to go ahead and create your own murmur because it's like see one, do one, teach one. Except again, it's hear one, do one and hopefully teach one, teach somebody else, right? Or at least maybe, you know, send them to watch this video. <laughs> How do you go ahead and create your own murmur? 
I mean, I have this microphone, so I will use this microphone as, a, as an example, but you can use your phone microphone. You can actually, you know, find if you want your Bluetooth microphone, anything like that. If you have your, you know, pods or whatever, you can actually pull that and blow into it, making a murmur like this. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not trying to make a perfectly sounding murmur. You're just trying to emulate roughly so that you can practice what a murmur sounds like. Because then we're gonna go ahead and go through some of the different murmurs using your microphone. So we talked about S1 and S2, that lub dub, lub dub, okay? So if you have that systolic ejection murmur, it's happening between S1 and S2 right after S1, before S2, because that's when the ventricle is contracting. And so your murmur that happens between S1 and S2 is gonna be a systolic murmur. So we're gonna do that lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, and we're gonna add a murmur right between that. So we go lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. If you're able to beatbox, it will sound something like this. Again, the murmur sound does not have to be perfect. We're just trying to really practice those where we find the murmurs on the S1, S2, lub, dub. So remember, between those two, systolic murmur. So now what about a diastolic murmur? Remember, if it's between S1 and S2, it's systolic. If it's after S2 and before S1, that's gonna be your diastolic. So we do that lub, dub, and you're gonna have your murmur. Lub, dub, murmur. Lub, dub, murmur, okay? Supposed to your systolic is lub, murmur, dub. Lub, murmur, dub. Lub, murmur, dub. So what does that sound like? Lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, or Beatboxing. I want you to try this. You can stop this video now if you want. Make your sound like a murmur with a blowing sound. A whoosh. Now there are some murmurs that occur during systole and also kind of continue into diastole. Like for example in babies, the patent ductus arteriosus murmur. It is cold machine-like murmur just because the old machines, the old washing machines used to sound that wishy-washy, wishy-washy. Okay, that is in systole and that is in diastole. So you get that lub, that sh, the dub, and then after that is the diastolic murmur, which is a, it's a little bit lower. So lub, sh, dub, Lub sh dub sh 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 lub sh. Okay, that is your machine like murmur of a patent ductus arteriosus. Now you also have a murmur that starts with the lub and it's called holosystolic, meaning it actually uh, goes through the whole sequence of S1 and the systole, that heart contracting, that ventricle contracting, and it's so loud, it actually goes to the end and obscures your S2, your second sound, your dub. So you really only hear lub, lub, lub. So you're gonna get lub with your murmur, lub with your murmur, lub with your murmur, okay? And it's gonna sound holosystolic like this. Lub, sh, lub, sh, lub, sh, lub, sh. Love, shh, okay? <laughs> the murmur is so loud, it will actually obscure the second heart sound, a hollow systolic murmur. That is very, very typical of a VSD or a ventricular septal defect. Okay, so now you've learned how to make the murmurs yourself and practice it. Now, let's go ahead and do this final test, which is, hearing real life murmurs. And I want you to pay attention to the tr three tricks that I told you. I want you to close your eyes and really focus on the sounds of love dub and see and hear if you can actually have a, if you have a murmur between 
S1, S2 that loved up, or if it's outside of that. Remember, inside of that, it is a systolic murmur. Outside of that, diastolic murmur. All right, so now you've heard all the murmurs, you've practiced, you've learned the three different tricks. Go back to this video, listen to the murmurs again, go back, try those tricks out on your patients. Especially if you know that you have a patient that has a murmur, go ahead, close your eyes, tap it out, and then number three, go ahead and create that sound. If you're interested in learning more about murmurs, I do have another video that I created a couple of years ago on murmurs, and it's pretty cool because it's learning how to listen to murmurs, but actually using music as well. I think you'll really enjoy this video. So go ahead and click on that at the end of this so that you can check out that video. And as always, keep learning, oh curious one.